What can you see? Nothing. There is nothing. Wait. There are some markings. It's some form of elch. I can't read it. There are a few who can. Welcome to eLearningGo. Today we are going to talk about recognizing handwritten characters and digits. This is a task in which people are excellent. But what about characters that you have never seen? Of course, you need some labeled examples to learn them. A human pretty much needs only one example. Probably you don't know the characters that I'm writing now, but you can easily pair them and you can even tell if it doesn't fit in. At the moment the computer needs much more data. For example, the MNIST dataset contains 42,000 images of digits from 0 to 9. But once it has learned the digits, it is much faster to decode large numbers than us. There are many tutorials that can help you understand and tackle this challenge. Basically, this is the hello world of deep learning. There is a Kaggle challenge for it, and you can reach over 99% accuracy relatively easily. And we also did. Look at that. But what about the Elvish text on the ring? Of course, we could decode it by hand, but we decided to teach the machine to do it. We separated the task into two parts. Tomasz teaches the computer the Tangler alphabet, which is the name of the Elvish alphabet, and I make the Tangler digit recognition. So, recognizing handwritten characters is a slightly harder task than digits, as we have more output classes. There's an extended version of the MINIST dataset that contains handwritten characters too. We will use it to have a sense on handwritten character recognition because it has a few 10,000 images. Firstly, we tried a small network with only a few convolutional layers and one hidden layer and one softmax layer and it generates the following result. The model can generalize on the training dataset well, because the result on the validation data is not similar. So let's try some modification. Firstly, we added batch normalization after each convolutional layer. And fun fact, if you don't add input shape to your model, your model will fail to converge. The testing result has more variance in it, so not yet good. Then we try to add dropout layers after the convolutional layers and after the flattening, which could help the model to generalize better and remove the variance. It gives a similar result as the first basic model, but with better accuracy. The problem might be the too shallow network because it still gives only a 90.97% accuracy. So therefore, we tried a model that is used to have 99.75% accuracy on the MINIS dataset and they gave it a try to learn the characters. You can find the link to that model in the description below. The learning curve of the model can be seen on this figure. You can see that it reaches the best results for me so far. Its predicting accuracy is the best so far too, but it can be even better by augmenting the input and validation data. Augmentation means creating additional images from the already existing by rotating, mirroring, shearing, blah blah, the original ones. It is kind of awesome, so check it out and hide it in your back pocket in case you will need it. This is fine by me, so let's move on the Tangvor digits. To create the input data, I wanted to draw them by hand because I don't have a digital drawing tablet. Therefore, I created a template, let's keep it between me and you, but it's basically a table in Word. you think what a genius, but knowing the size of the template can help parsing the image. The Elvish letters to teach the model is used from the image. It shows how to use Elvish letters as English character coding. Then I drew the Tangle characters by hand to the printed out template. You can see the template in the description below. Then I took a photo of each page with cam scanner, no advertisement intended, cropped the outer edge of the images into the program, then I created a program that parses these input images and creates folder for them that is parsable by TensorFlow flow from dir command, which can be used with data augmentation either. This way I got 156 images that is really a small database. So I used augmentation to make a few thousand from that. The result of the fitting is the following. You can see fluctuation in the learning curve. 
The shape of the curve is might caused by the not enough training data, therefore the model can hardly generalize on these few images compared to how many ways a letter can be written. Now let's see how the model performs on the ancient elvish letters engraved into the ring. It seems the ancient elvish letters encoded the text MY PRECIOUS. The next topic is the digit recognition. After finishing the Amnes challenge, I need to create the dataset for the handwritten labeled Elvish numbers from 0 to 11. I have chosen to create an app where I can draw the digits one by one and save them as 64 by 64 ENG images. Link to the app in the video description. You can draw new digits, but please fill out the label correctly. I will share the extended dataset later. During the following step, I transformed images into CSVs, just like in the Amnis dataset, so I can use almost the same notebook. The Keras model, which was previously used for the Amnis data, can do about 100% accuracy on the train set, but only 75% on the validation set. So I'm a bit sad, but I can do better. So, there is no bias, which is good news, but there is a big variance. How can we reduce it? We need to increase the augmentation and the dropout. We can also use the early stopping technique so the algorithm will not overload the train data. Also, the result is much more reliable if we use cross-validation on a small dataset like this. So there is a custom code for cross-validation because the scikit-learn doesn't support one hot vectors. You can find it in the notebook linked in the description. Tell us if you could use it in your own project. Now back to the result. Ta-da! About 92% on average using cross-validation. You can see that the train and validation accuracy overlaps during the iterations. I'm quite happy with this result. But let's try transfer learning anyway. So I get the train neural net previously used for the Amnes dataset, cut off the last two dense layers, freeze the convolutional layers, change the input and output data and go. I can't go over 70% accuracy. And also, more generalization doesn't really help. A worse performance is probably because I had to convert the images to 28 by 28 pixels, which greatly decreases the amount of information in the pictures. Maybe that was the problem. You can see a small visualization of how the algorithm groups the digits using principal component analysis in 2D and also in 3D. I have also plotted the incorrectly guessed characters there are only a few of them. And finally, we modify the drawing app where you can decode your own Elvish numbers, improve your Tangwar drawing skills, or test the performance of our algorithm. Finally, we could translate the Elvish text. But what is it? It seems to be some kind of ancient link. But what is behind it? The links to our blog with detailed information, Jupyter notebooks, datasets, applications, and the Kaggle challenge are in the description. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe. See you next week with another fun machine learning project.